Stop! Please! Holy oh, shit. Hey, what's up? This is Community Service with Craig Conan. That's me. Uh oh. Yeah, everybody, I wasn't ready for what's happening, man. Everybody out here in shape. <laughs> Going down the street with my stomach sticking up. Everybody looking at me like, you don't live around here. <laughs> so I put these on you? If you want, yeah. We're getting fancy. I prefer. I prefer. Hey, what? Are you ready? Are we rolling? We've been rolling? Hey, yeah. what's up? This is a uh, community service podcast, and I got my homie Brian Simpson on. He's very, very fucking funny. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just fucking always have liked you, sir. I met you in San Diego at yeah. Reds, right? Yeah, at Reds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. was a good night. You buried me at, at Reds. <laughs> to bury me. Yeah, baby. I, uh, I think burying you is my biggest credit. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I respect. He's so funny and he's so good at stand up. And uh, burying is, is I don't, if, if you're not familiar, it's when you crush so hard. This this cat and this green tea is making me nervous right there. It's when you crush so hard, it's hard It's hard for the next comic to follow you. Yeah. And uh, I, I, it made me happy because you're so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why it made me happy. It's just an ego stroke. Yeah, it makes it. <laughs> it makes me it makes me happy though. I I like uh, I like being challenged. You know? Yeah, it's the best because I always get better from it. Yeah, following anyone that murders is the best feeling on the planet. If you continue the murder, if you get buried, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not so. It's not so good. It's yeah. not so good. No, but uh, I don't want to fucking sound like a douchebag but yeah no it was it was a yeah it was a good night i like burying weak comics because then it's like hey, 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 keep at it bitch <laughs> um yeah get back get back in the gym yeah no but what what else i don't know we're already i'm already struggling in the first 12 seconds of my podcast Oh, sorry. I, I, well, I'm burying you now. So. Yeah, good. It's good. I deserve yeah. it. After talking, no. Uh, well, that was that night. You started out with new shit. Did that, I? I don't remember. Man, I don't remember. That was a long. That was a long time ago. Time ago. Actually, was, you know what? No, the tape from that night. I still use that tape. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got, didn't bury you that bad. I got good tape from that night. Okay. Yeah. It All was right. just the first like the first like half of my set was a struggle. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why you're a pro because you just dig your fucking you, you plant your feet and you keep. There's been so many times that I bomb. Uh, when I bombed recently in San Francisco opening for Michael Yo, I did 15 minutes up top, cold open, and I bombed for the first eight nine minutes. <laughs> but I was proud of myself because I just stayed in the pocket and just kept hitting them, kept hitting them, kept hitting them, and then <laughs> finally I got them. I was like, Jesus Christ, you couldn't. It took uh, seventy five percent of my set to win them over, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, it, I only can see. I only feel bad like about bombing when I can't figure out why. Yeah. Yeah, like if it's like if some like if I'm doing something that always work and it's not working and I can't figure out what like what I did wrong that made me bomb. That's when it fucks with my head. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had bombs that like made me almost quit. Damn. Yeah. My those were mainly in the beginning that uh -huh. made me want to quit yeah but i'm yeah. i don't know i'm thin skin i'm sensitive I'm like what is that i can't quit man. what what yeah. is it yeah first yeah you can't quit you're uh, too good you're man two, ten toes in you, you got them smart jokes you got them <laughs> jokes i dream about <laughs> That's a, I, I hear that a lot it don't feel smart to me well it is sir it is you got them thinker jokes oh can they can cat. they see, can they see the cat just a hair of him oh just a smidgen yeah Yo, what's his what's his name, bro? Mr. Cat. Mr. Cat, that's bullshit. Maybe point it down. Do the crotch shots for us. <laughs> we try to point it up to get out of the crotch shots, but now we got a cat. We got a cat in the mix. This guy is so fucking cool. Yeah. I've never been a cat person, but this guy just came into my life literally knocking at my door, and I fell in love. He's he snot rocketed on my face yesterday, though. <laughs> he has some sort of sinus uh, congestion problem. Oh, he's an outdoor cat. 
I let them out a little bit only when I'm home, but I keep them indoor. I fell in love with them too much. I don't, I don't want them out too long without me. He'll get hurt. But uh, he's an indoor outdoor cat, but he has some sort of sinus problem. And uh, the owner, the previous owner that gave him to me, and everyone asks, why do they give you their cat? Why do they give you? Because they had five animals and two <laughs> kids and they were moving. They had three cats. I had zero animals. They're good people. So what, they got a cat for each kid? Is pretty much. They had too many cats. Now they have a cat yeah, for each kid. That's too many animals, man. That's, yeah. So that's why they gave me their animal. People were like, you can't give away. <laughs> they had five. They had five. Now they have four and I have one. This is better odds. Anyways. Uh, oh, yeah. So he's got this. They said throughout his history of his life, he just had a nasal congestion problem. They've taken him to the vet over and over and over and they can't heal him or figure it out so they just he, he has snot rockets and he'll just go <laughs> and shoot out these fucking boogers i swear to god like a three quarters of an inch long and yesterday i was cuddling with him and i like to put my face on his face and of course he went <laughs> and it went <laughs> and i just got fucking splatted on oh man on my cheek and i was just like god damn it <laughs> And yeah, I had a good old cat blood booger on my cheek last night. <laughs> That's love right there. Disinfect, disinfect. He's just a chiller, dude. Look at that motherfucker. He's cool. I could put your drink back now. Yeah, you get a cool cat, you just you lucky. Most yeah. of them are assholes. Yeah, he got an asshole cat. Yeah. He got an asshole cat. <laughs> He's nice you, now. Yeah, you got an asshole cat? My cat was an asshole. It took her about it took her about six months to warm up. Now you got a good cat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah isn't it the best, though, when they turn good? Yeah. He started off good. No, nah, my cat don't trust motherfuckers. No. <laughs> so I didn't know this. Did you know that cats are nocturnal and at around 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., they, go crazy. they drink Red Bull and fucking <laughs> yeah. scratch your toes in yeah, your sleep? Call and it you're... Crazy kitty time. Dude. That motherfucker on my feet was out. It was a little hot, you know, and all of a sudden I <laughs> see this fool pounce like a lion on the Serengeti and just going, Nyah! and I'm like, God damn it. Bro, next thing you know, you're going to have a little, you're going to have a little backpack with the, with, the, with the bubble on it so you can take her, take them on walks. I'm telling you, man, my cat turned me into a whole bitch. I live up the, I live up the street from tail waggles, you know? Yeah. It's like this. It's like basically whole foods for pet food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I can't like this this so I didn't know this right but you know like if if a cat starts out as like an outdoor cat they be they real picky eaters cuz they used to digging through trash and like choosing shit. Yeah. So I would I kept going to the store and I would bring home like five things she ain't like none of the shit. I bring home five more things she she love one of them and then I get a whole fucking big giant bag of it and then she wouldn't like it. And then I would go back you know what I mean? Yeah. And some somebody had to tell me like, no, no, stop changing it. Just make her eat. Yeah. What's in there, and then she'll get used. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I mean, I've I've literally bought her like, because I got obsessed with like getting her the healthiest shit. Yeah. So she ain't like none of the healthy shit that she like she did anything that was healthy. She, she didn't like it. She only liked the garbage shit. Yeah, because it's delicious. Right. <laughs> so I had to like find that happy medium, man. Yeah. I get that Trader Joe's special. It fucking uh, six ninety nine Benchfield Holistic. Well, you still get your discount? No. It depends on the employee. <laughs> they could get fired for it, but yeah. Um, no, I don't get a discount. I'm just kidding. Don't fire anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, no more discount. But it's okay. I'm making that stand-up money. I made 12 bucks yesterday. Yeah. I'm killing it. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know that life but it's good it feels good uh to make a living through stand-up i think about that pretty often and it makes me happy yeah we luck we, we're lucky we are yeah, yeah we're doing what we love and making a living and paying for our cat food because the thing money. is even though i'm like i'm i'm still poor i'm still so poor i was poor before and completely miserable you know, working other jobs. Yeah. Even jobs where I was making great money, great money, great hours, great benefits. And I fucking hated every second of it. The most money I ever made in my life was as a loan officer for American home loans. I used to do mortgages and, uh, I was the most depressed I ever was in my life. <laughs> yeah. And the, the biggest drug addict, the lowest point of drugs at, Bro, at I that was, point. I was working at the Pentagon for like two, two and a half years. <laughs> 
And when I left that bitch, I think I was making twenty seven dollars an hour. Yeah. And oh, it was so sweet. I had I worked I worked th- th- three twelve hour days and every other week I worked one so I worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday, twelve hours. Yeah. And then every other Wednesday, eight hours. And then you're just off. And then I was just off the rest of the year. That's better. I'd rather do four Oh man, yeah. I don't know about twelve then, hour but and, four ten hour days they had three days off. And then my roommate did the other three days so we was so we basically he was never home we yeah. just had the whole place to myself i've had a roommate where we had complete opposite schedules and it was to the point to where we missed each other because we never saw each other like, yeah. hey that's, Kita. All, that's, that's amazing yeah it's yeah. a good roommate because yeah i have only had good roommates uh besides uh siblings and family members mm. just kidding they're great but uh and I still can never have a roommate again. No, I've had, well, I've had, mo- I've, I'm, I'm about 50 50. I've been a shitty roommate too. Have you ever been a shitty roommate? No. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I have. Been, you know, it was weird. It's like I didn't realize I was a shitty roommate until I had shitty roommates. And then I was like, oh. Oh, shit. that was me. Yeah, I definitely was the, yeah. I was a shitty roommate. I got kicked out. Yeah, I was definitely a shitty roommate. You got kicked out? <laughs> yeah, but it was my sisters. But they were still my roommates because it, it, we were we were paying the mortgage on my mother's house. She uh, moved out to live with her grand, her mother, my grandmother, and take care of her. And then uh, me and my sisters moved in my mom's house and took over the mortgage while she... Uh, we rented her house. No. And then, uh, yeah. Over the course of two years, uh, my degenerate partying uh, just <laughs> fucking kept going downhill. The narcotics crept in, the cocaine and the pills oh, yeah. slipped in, and then uh, the behavior became weirder and darker and more yeah. deviant. And they're like, and there was fighting and fucking and all that good stuff. Bro, it's tough. It's and they're tough like, you gotta go. Attic, yeah, they when they kick me out. They're like, we can't live with you anymore. And then I apologized to them. I was like, I'm sorry. At least I was wise enough to know. But that wasn't your rock bottom. No, it took, <laughs> took about four more years. And lots and lots of more. Oh, no, Jesus Christ, it took seven more years. Damn. It's great. a process. Sobriety is a process. <laughs> you say, you're like, oh, I'll just quit narcotics. And yeah. then you drink. I don't think it's that easy. But then somebody has cocaine and you fucking, you want to get your dick wet. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, good luck loving narcotics, turning down narcotics while drunk. Good luck with that. <laughs> huh? Yeah, and then and then I said, like, oh, maybe I could just be a stoner. And even though weed saved my life from narcotics, I was still would abuse that. Yeah? How, how so? Just all day, every day, you know? I work at Trader Joe's at 5 a.m. and fucking smoke OG Kush at 4 a.m. It's like, that's that's not necessary. Um, yeah, I uh, see that. Yeah. If I could be an appropriate stoner, I, I probably still would, but I'm a, I'm a all-in kind of guy. Yeah, I'm sure. a eat a hash oil edible in the morning and regret it later kind of guy, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, ah, oh, my day's fucked. And then be like, don't do that ever again. And the next day comes, and then I'll do it again. Yo, I don't fuck with no edibles unless I'm, I ain't got shit else to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'll do one though. I've, I'll do one. I used to do one before I took the stage. Eat a forty times hash oh, oil no. edible. Nah, you tripping? Then I, I know, I know. That's <laughs> why I can't do nothing. Nah, like before. See, I, what I like though, I like, a, I like an edible, and a cup of coffee together. See, that was my favorite recipe. It was it was uh, oxycotton and cocaine. It was like an <laughs> upper and a downer. You go, you know. Well, that should give you a heart attack or or a stroke. It kills a lot of people, but I guess I got good genes. No, I I never. I mean, I abused it, but uh, my time in that world, even though it was the narcotic world, I only spent about four or five years in it, uh, which seems like a long time, but. In hindsight, I got out. That's pretty quick, for because most some I'm, people never get out. Some of my friends are still in it, and I was like, "You're gonna die, bro." How much of that time was stand up? At that narcotic world, no stand up. I was pre stand up. Uh I did a little cocaine, maybe a handful of times when I did improv when I was scared of stand up, because I did improv at the Second City. 
I went through the program for two years. Damn. And then after that, that was like a year of just kind of fucking toiling out there. And I know I'm a comic, but I'm a scared little pussy. That shit. That shit makes me mad, dude. What the that the whole fucking improv school shit? <laughs> like it's something about it's something about sh- where it's like it's like all the shit that used to be cool skateboarding hip hop fucking well, improv was never cool right but but you know what I mean like stand up it's like now you can buy your way into it you know what I mean you it's like the advantages to the fucking rich kids this it used to be the realm. Of like poor people, yeah, you know? and now you can just be you can be a rich kid and just buy all of the f- tools and get a professional website and get a, you know what I mean, and have your it, rent it, paid and not have to like pay. Do you know what I mean? I, nah, I just yeah, yeah. I don't like that idea of it, and I, and I know the improv schools ain't completely responsible for it, but they just represent it in my mind when I'm like, oh yeah, you yeah, if you got fucking if you got five thousand dollars to pay for classes, then you can be. Yeah, you can be. Uh, no, you're. You, I never thought of it that way, but I you're right. Because a lot shit. of if, if, not all, of course, but a lot of it feels like rich kids that yeah, they, their if, daddy pays their they, trust they, fund kids that where they they just they could go to school all day every day while we're working jobs yeah. or uh, and uh, there's something about the 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 you know being the the fucking grungy ground floor broke doing it out of just the grit of love of it as opposed to like oh yeah i got money i could you know what i mean not that knocking them because there's nothing wrong with being born into money it's not your fault but it's just something different about it like we have to earn it on a different level Nah, i'm knocking them fuck them fuck them it ain't money because <laughs> you know because you know what it is deep down regardless of what they say deep down they still don't recognize the advantage it gave them you know, yeah. That that I, I was uh, I was reading about a uh, experiment they did at a university. I can't remember which one, but they like they had like all these kids play Monopoly like one on one, and they and they would flip a coin and one of them would get one of them would get an extra die, start out with five times the money, and I forget with one more advantage, and that person won 99% of the games, right? Yeah, of course. But 80% of the the winners still was like and they all and they knew they had an advantage, it wasn't like a secret. But they still were like but I'm pretty good at monopoly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's how people act. Like yeah, you you they might acknowledge they might know like uh you know, they might know that they have an advantage, but they don't feel that way. They like, yeah, but I'm still I'm still pretty awesome. You know, th- th- that's how they think. So fuck them. Fuck these rich kids. Fuck them in their ass. You have to <laughs> you have to prove to me that you're not that person. You can't just say it, motherfucker. I got I got to see. Get out the game. Go do rich kid stuff. Go 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 play golf. Go motherfucking, you know, travel the world. Lacrosse. Yeah. <laughs> go fucking tie a sweater around your neck, you asshole. Yeah, rich cuz rich people ruin everything. Uh, they kind of do. It's just the entitled. Uh, it's very rare you you meet somebody raised from such rich wealth that is humbled and and uh, was raised right, just straight up to fucking boil it down. Was yeah. chin checked. Was knocked out. Was fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something. If you never had it hard, there's just something. Fucking. You're an asshole. You know. Yeah. Is that, it's just uh That's why I don't be I don't be praising these celebrities for being nice. People give them credit for being nice. Like that motherfucker didn't give me no money. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they like they like they they meet Beyonce and she and she didn't spit in their face and they're like Beyonce was so cool. Like, no, that bitch is rich and she ain't do shit to help your life. Fuck her. Let her keep walking. You know? That's how I feel. Like I be hearing about Keanu Reeves fucking paying people's tabs. You know, and motherfucking yeah. kissing babies and shit. You know, so I mean, I'm not saying Beyonce don't do that. I'm just using her as an example. Keanu's the best. I fucking love that dude. I mean, I ain't never met him, but I'm a reserve judgment. Cause, <laughs> cause don't forget, this shit got out of hand with Chuck Norris too, and he's a fucking asshole. How do you know he's an asshole? I know. Oh I man, know from, I, I love Chuck Norris. I grew up watching him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he. I'm just saying, he maybe he's not an asshole to everybody, but I'm I'm probably never gonna meet him again. 
And so I'm pretty sure that, you know that's what he is to me. What he do to you? I can't, <laughs> All right, you don't have to say. Yeah, I can't tell the story without uh, incriminating somebody else. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in the I'm gonna say that for the uh, for the memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Chuck Norris jokes. Those shit's funny. No, the Chuck dude. Norris jokes were fire. You know what I mean? So funny. I watched Walker Texas Ranger. I watched it for eight seasons. Oh man, I'm not proud of that. But I watched that whole nah. shit. I think it was on for ten years. I straight up almost watched. All of it. I just love seeing people get kicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Remember when Conan uh, used to pull the lever and then bust out a Walker, Texas Ranger fucking uh, kick? No. And then he did that for like six months. And then finally, they did a, a bit where Chuck Norris was in the audience. He goes, you've been making fun of me for six months. And I don't <laughs> like it. And then Chuck Norris kicked Conan into some boxes. It was so funny, oh, dude. I do, I, do, I do remember that. It was yeah, so yeah. stupid. I loved it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Conan was the first uh, time where I thought in my head, like, I could, I could do that, I could do stand up, or really? host, you know, yeah, because I've been watching him since I was a little kid. You think you host late night? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> on the, yeah, yeah. Let's get Conan the fuck up out of there. Um, he already is. He fucking fuck you, Leno. Is he retiring? No, but that whole Leno pushed him out. Oh uh, yeah, go do two more seasons. Man, you know what? Their beef was so complicated that I just, just stopped caring. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, I'm not caping for rich people. You know what I mean? They'll work it out. They'll figure it out. <laughs> because you know, it's not like it's not like Conan was like out on the street. No, yeah, he's still a millionaire, <laughs> he's like, and he just went to another network. <laughs> yeah, he good. Yeah, he just got another TV show. It's like I wish I had a backup show, motherfucker. I just didn't like Leno because he said he was going to retire, and then he then he did retire, and then they gave Conan the show, and he goes, you know what? Let me have my show back, and then you just go do it for two more seasons, and then retire again. It's like you just you yeah. had a twenty two year run, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, but that's that's rich white dude beef though. <laughs> yeah, like because. Cause also I don't know what transpired between them, you know. Maybe it's some up. Maybe it's some other shit going on. Where, where Leno was, you know. Cause if Leno's like me, he's probably like, "Oh yeah, you thought you were gonna disrespect me? Well, I'm gonna wait until the perfect moment." I don't think Conan's a disrespecting kind of guy. Maybe not no more. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know either, and I, it's weird that yeah, no no bad stories have ever come out about Conan. That's what I mean. I don't think there's lots yeah. of bad stories about Lemon. Yeah, well, well, he definitely did some dirty shit to get the get the job. Yeah, he did some dirty shit to Letterman. I still don't understand all of that, but I know Letterman went to CBS and started a new late night show because Leno supposedly snaked him of that job. I don't really know what happened, but I guess there was some shady shit. Uh, also, Leno used to be, this is just what I hear through the fucking comedy circuit. He used to be like a dark and edgy comic and kill and, and, and people used to watch him and look up to him. And then he went from that to like kind of corny, like, man. Eh. Oh, he sold out. And, uh, so he lost some respect from his peers. But then I also working at Trader Joe's, I ring up this fucking old dude and he said Leno was the nicest guy ever and wear his hat to his pizza shop and pretty much put his pizza shop on the map and made him a lot of money just cause just cause they played poker together, you know, and it was just so I don't fucking know. So I heard that's a that's that old fucking cat with the cane that always has the nasty jokes and he has the bad breath halitosis, oh, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Like, come here, I got a joke about some <laughs> pussy. <laughs> yeah, that guy's cool. But that's the only dude that says something nice about Leno? Yeah, but I don't know that many dudes that know Leno. You yeah, know? True, yeah, true, 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 true. But he said he gave him a lot of business and a lot of money and would wear his hat on the Tonight Show. Did, did they ever make up, him and uh, Letterman? I don't think they did. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you Letterman is still waiting on that on that revenge. <laughs> I would be. I mean, of of the two, Letterman is more of the legend now. But see, I would make I would make up with that. I would make up with him just so I could get revenge. <laughs> I would make up with him, let him let his guard down. You know what I mean? Be at the bat mitzvah, all that shit. I enjoy your revenge posts on yeah. Facebook. He's always playing. You remind me of fucking. Uh, what was it? The fucking pinky in the brain. Try uh -huh. to take over the world. Yeah, yeah man. Get yours, He's man. He's the brain. I'm pinky. 
Because listen, justice is probably justice is always better than revenge, right? But justice ain't available to everybody, so settle for revenge. You know, get yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really all about it. It's like a religion. I'm trying to be on the forgiveness end. <laughs> oh, I can forgive and still get revenge. Yeah, revenge I, does feel good. I I'll, I'll forgive you right after I get revenge. <laughs> there you, know. you go. Hey, kitty. What's some of the best revenge you've you've uh, done? Oh, some of the best revenge I've done. Oh man. You know what's funny? That like, what if you're? Uh, it just popped in my head. What if, because of the, what we talked about at the beginning, the Reds when we met, and uh, and then you going if you played nice to be my friend, just <laughs> only to set me up for a revenge later. So you nah nah, because I would because I, I wouldn't take I didn't take that kind of thing personally. Yeah. No. Okay. Look, I'll tell you because see part of the see one of my rules for revenge is you have to get away with it. None of this petty revenge where you shoot motherfuckers in the head in broad daylight and now you go you going to prison. That's not revenge. That's like that's kind of like even Steven. Yeah. No, you, the revenge is you got to get away with it, my dude. That's that's the sweet revenge. Count of Monte Cristo, motherfucking Shawshank Redemption. That that's revenge. Yeah. Yeah, but all of that just like vengeance without without scheming. That's 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 that's, that's rookie shit. Yeah. Yeah, you supposed to get away with it. You know, cherry on top is if they know it was you and it don't matter. But if you can just get away with it, <laughs> you know, like only they know it was you and they can't do a motherfucking thing about it. That's that's the cherry on top. But you don't need that. You just need to get revenge and get the fuck up out of there. I'm more a passionate revenge guy. Mine happens look, right then and there. You know, it's me. And then I'm like, oh, look, shit, I, I did so that. I will tell you, I will tell you the. It's, it's not the worst revenge anybody ever got on me, but it's the most significant revenge, and I totally deserved it. Right? Um, and it happened I, to you? It happened to me. So, and, and way back, like, when I was in boot camp, I was the guide of the platoon, which is, like, the head recruit or whatever, right? So, it was this one dude. So, like, when you when you hit a certain amount of weeks in Marine Corps boot camp, you go out to the rifle range, and that's significant because when when you're that's it's way the fuck out. So when you back in the you know when you back in the in the main area, that's where all the admin are. You get the healthy wellness checks with like. You know, the higher ups come down and check on you and make sure you ain't got no bruises, make sure nobody's abusing you, that kind of shit. Yeah. When you go out in the rifle range, ain't none of them motherfuckers out there. So that's when they that's when you get fucked up, you know? And and it was this kid, so when we first got out there, they they starving you, they working you to death, blah, 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 and you finally get to eat child, like people, you know, you got fucking five minutes, all that shit. And the drill instructor, because it wasn't his first time, we get back and he and he goes, Now look, I know. For a fact, a little birdie told me that somebody stole some child out the child hall. You know what I mean? And and we all looking around at each other like, what? Cause it cause it's like that's unthinkable. It's like nobody everyone's looking around like nobody would steal something from the child. What? That's yeah. You <laughs> it's unthinkable. And then this motherfucker, it was a dude in Abitun named Jort. His name was Jort. J-O-R-D-T. And I don't know, he was like German or something. And and he had like the gayest lisp in the world, dude. <laughs> and so out of the blue, when we're all confused, like ooh, he's like, I'm gonna ask one more time. And he steps forward. It was me, sir. Yeah. It was me, sir. And and if you like if you ever heard like 50 people just exhale, oh because <laughs> because that's not gonna just be him getting fucked up. It's all of us. Yeah. You know? Yeah, dude. So they made us go fill out. <laughs> we had to go outside, fill all our pockets up with sand, fill all our go in the bathroom, fill all our canteens up with water, walk through the fucking barracks, dumping the sand everywhere, and then walk back through dumping the water everywhere, and then have it all clean before we would go to bed. Right. Next day, man, the military's stupid. Yeah, dumb they as want shit. you fucking drop sand, wet it, and then <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good for war. <laughs> no, it's about discipline. I know. Right? Or some shit. Anyway, next day, same fucking thing. So it's cl it's clearly a trick. He doesn't know that anybody did anything. But he just Jort's dumbass fell for it again. He steps forward again. It was me, sir. 
fucked us up again, right? So then a couple weeks later, the opportunity arises. Why is George taking the blame for something he didn't do? He did do it. Oh, okay. No, he did it. He and then you know what it was? It was fucking little it was little jelly packets. He slipped some jelly packets in his pocket because he was that motherfucking hungry and then told on himself. And got all of us fucked up, even though like he just did it the day before. And then told on himself again. So that's why everybody was frustrated, right? Yeah. So like two weeks later, we back in the rear. I I get woken up in the middle of the night because they have Jort in a shower that's like in the in the in a building next to us that's not it don't nobody's in there, right? They have him in the shower and they're beating the shit out of this dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I walk in there and I give it like maybe five, I give him maybe like five more licks. He's crying. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, stop, stop, stop. And then somebody was like, yo, I, somebody ran in behind me. He's like, yo, I didn't get no licks. Ran in behind me. I was like, hey, all right, go ahead. He hit him a couple of times, right? And this is with like soap in a sock. Yeah. They're hitting him, right? And then, so boom, now, now boot camp's over. We all graduate. I go home on like extra leave. I think I have 45 days leave or something like that. And I run... And then I, I I joined combat uh, training or whatever, and so I'm at I'm at combat training. We get sent out to the middle of the field. They told us not to bring anything, right? And we get the fuck out there. It's the hottest day I, I, that I ever seen in my life. Where they they stopped us from going on a on a hump because it was too hot. People was drop people was dropping. Yeah. And the next day, a fucking ice cream truck comes out there. We've been out in the fucking in the in the field for like three four weeks and it's fucking and now there's an ice cream truck out, like out of heaven yeah and it costs money you know what i mean yeah and i'm like fuck and i'm waiting in this line i want a lemonade the lemonade was 45 cent i had 35 cent and literally nobody in my platoon had money and it, but there's other platoons out there with us and there's a dude in front of me i tap him on the shoulder i'm like yo you got a dime turns around it's jordan and he looked at me like all in his face, just in his face. It said it all. Like motherfucker, I wouldn't give you a dime if it was if it was gonna save everybody life out this month. Yeah, yeah. If I had like, fifty million dollars, yeah. I wouldn't give you a goddamn <laughs> yeah, like, dime. Like, 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 like you hit me with soap, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> My ribs are no, clean, it, but they hurt. And that's the thing I did. They I hurt never, real bad. I never hit him. I just let him get hit. Which it was like it's fucked up now. Like looking back on it, I feel so bad about it now. Well, that's the fucking military. It's prison shit. It's so it's you guys are mildly institutionalized. Yeah. My buddy Travis was in the military, and every time he come back, we be like, "Whoa! Like, <laughs> did you just go to the pen, bro? Like, why? <laughs> why are you loking up on fools, dude?" Yeah, it takes a while, and then you, and then it, it's like the problem solving skills that they reward is is weird, you know. That's what they. I mean, let's face it. Marines, they're they're you're, you're, they're training you to be killers. You're going to go kill people. Yeah, but that's the that's the guys. But like, I wasn't a killer. I was a technician. You know, but yeah. but the but the Marine Corps has this weird mantra where they like everyone's a rifleman. Every Marine is a rifleman. Just like no, nah, that guy's a mechanic. <laughs> right, right. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if you if you in any other branch, your job is your job. But in yeah. the Marine Corps, they're like, you're that and. You and you, you a killer just in case. I mean, we. I feel bad the dude got beat, but yo, stop stealing the jelly, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> it's very simple. That's true. You know, that's true. But and, and look, it's not that he. It's not that he didn't deserve an ass whooping. Did it? Did the punishment fit the crime? Probably not. Yeah. But at the same time, if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't have gave my ass a dime either. I would not have gave me a dime. Yeah, like no what you. When the, I still think he got the shittier end of that <laughs> revenge stick. Unless that, unless that ass whooping saved, unless that ass whooping saved my life, like somebody whipped my ass to get me off narcotics. Or yeah, something. I'm not thanking the motherfucker for whooping my ass. I'm not gonna help you out. <laughs> yeah, it's weird how an ass whooping can do that. Ass whooping will will, will, will freshen, it will freshen up your uh, your your humility, won't it? I've said this on a previous podcast, but I cannot stress enough. Everybody should get knocked out because yeah. you just wake up a better person. You just do. Yeah, and you You're know like, what? Oh, I could get got. <clears throat> Honestly, and pe people look at me like I'm some kind of monster when I when I say that. I don't even think it really have to be knocked out. You know, I think everybody just need to have 
power applied to them. You know what I mean? In a way where it's like, because you ever run up on a motherfucker and, 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 and they do something like they grab you or nudge you and you realize, oh, this motherfucker is strong as <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, like where you just feel... Like you was feeling strong, and then yeah. they let you know, oh, you're not that strong. Most every guy I've ever fought is stronger uh, than me. No, but I'm I'm talking like that next level strength, where like they feel they feel like steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that strength is like this motherfucker could That's murder not, me. That work, that worker, it, anybody who's done labor for twenty years, they have a different kind of strength. They might might not be able to bench press like a CrossFit motherfucker, bro. But they got that like that Amish strength. Got that you know, reach. bro. My my last my last job before I left for the military when I was like. I had dropped out of school in between jobs was getting my GD I was working at the mall at this clothing store and the owners were shady as fuck and they used to always be late on the checks and all this shit and the and the manager would always like try to get you to work extra you know what I mean yeah so one day I come in I'm feeling fly I'm here to get my paycheck and the paychecks ain't they aren't there you know and I'm frustrated because it's always fucking happening and then the manager asked me if I can clock in so I come in on my day off to get my check and he asked me to clock in and my check ain't here. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm like, nah, I'm not, I can't work today. You know, he's like, for real? I was like, yeah, I'm just here to get my check. He's like, all right, boom. And then I, and I'm waiting for like 45 minutes. You know what I mean? And finally I'm like, yo, did you did you talk to what's his name about the checks? He's like, yo, give me a fucking minute. I was like, and, and I don't know what I was thinking, because this is a grown man I'm talking to, right? Like, he wasn't that much older. I mean, I think I was I was 17 or 18, and he was probably like 22. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yo. You gonna give me my motherfucking check, you know what I mean? Or I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start moving furniture in this motherfucker, you yeah. know what I mean? Or some I said some slick shit like that, bro. This motherfucker <laughs> hopped from over the counter, and he slammed me. He grabbed he grabbed me by my by my shirt and 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 threw me like from from here to like your like past where your kitchen is, like a like threw me like I was a child, bro. Like I was a little child. Yeah. Like to the point where like it took all the fight out of me. Yeah. Yeah. It was like there's no point in me even fighting back here. Yeah. Nah. Any anything I do is gonna make this worse. <laughs> because I was I was I was maximum like all righteous indignant, you know. I was maximum hype turned all the way. It seemed like up. he went zero to a hundred pretty fast. I, well, no, because see, if I had been paying attention, like if I knew then what I know now, I would have known that the owner was there. He's the manager. The owner's there on his ass, and he's, you know, he was he was being he was frustrated by the shit too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he he wasn't the enemy. It was fucking yeah. higher ups. Yeah, but I, I he took that frustration out on me. Either. He didn't like he didn't he didn't beat my ass or nothing like that. He just threw me out the store because he was telling me to get the fuck out the store and I wouldn't leave. And he fucking grabbed me and slammed me so motherfucking easily <laughs> and so so with so much force out the store that I was just like, yep, I'm good. Yeah, I'll see you later. I'll get that shit. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be waiting at Starbucks. Yeah, uh. <laughs> no, I get that shit in the mail. Yeah, I'll uh, come back tomorrow when you're not here. Yeah, this was at that was this was at Avison Mall in, in, in PG County, Maryland. Oh man, you remember? Uh, did I t tell the story on here when me and Marcos got in a fight at Trader Joe's? No. Oh, this is a good one. You got in a fight at Trader Almost, Joe's? Almost. It kind of. We assaulted each other a little bit, but uh, so it, at Trader Joe's we get pallets of fucking produce, so we're breaking down a, a pallet of bananas. It's like twenty-two cases of bananas. It's pretty heavy, so you're picking up the bananas and putting it on the on a rack you know to get rid of the pallet and uh this motherfucker so i'm breaking down pallets like going like this you know but like in in motion going from point a to point b and i go like this to move back and he has a banana you know did that whole little that pointed a banana so i moved into it and he you know it's like dude we're not 12 but it was a it was a hard green banana because when they ship them they're fucking not right you know right. so i like it like stabbed me a little bit and it scratched my cheek and it made me angry you know because this is like 7 a.m it's like i didn't ask to get scratched in the cheek by a banana but it was like <laughs> it was mild but annoyed me you know and then when we were breaking down the bananas, I saw underneath the rack, sometimes this happened, produce falls through, and there was a rotten, mushy, black banana oozing out. You know, it had been there for a month or whatever. It just was underneath the shelf, like underneath where you can't see it. And I, and I, and I found this, and I threw this at him, and it hit his neck and splattered all over him. And I knew that I had, I had 
that was a bit too far. Yeah. I was like, it was funny though. I ain't gonna lie. It was I was laughing, but I was like, fuck, that didn't that that punishment didn't fit and, and the it, crime. You said it was rotten. It was rotten. <laughs> oh, it man. was rotten, disgusting, moldy banana that beyond baking banana bread <laughs> rotten 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 yeah. and splattered on his neck and i forgot this is a, a a fucking og fucking mexican fool that irons his white tea creases his keck so he's a clean motherfucker he always has a towel you know like he's a clean clean i got you a little bit i'm sorry about that no, i feel you and he's a clean motherfucker so on top of this already being disgusting is he has ocd clean motherfucker and then he kept saying you better fucking you better buy me lunch fool or we got a problem you know he's got a thick ass accent you can't understand him and uh and and then uh and then i was just fucking around i was like i ain't buying you shit but in my head i was like i'm gonna buy him lunch i'm gonna make amends i'm gonna make this right and then, but I just keep fucking with them. My fault too. I should have just said, yeah, I'll get you lunch. And I was like, I ain't buying you shit, bitch. But I was kidding and I was going to buy him lunch, but he did not know that. So now I'm breaking down another palette and it's the soy and almond milk in, 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 in its cases. And uh, he puts a rotten sweet potato in a, in a produce bag and I'm bent over, hunched over like, like this, you know, picking up a case. And he swings the fucking bag oh. like this and he uppercuts me in my face like this. Oh, and the sweet shit. potato hits me in my eye socket <laughs> and explodes. And oh. Brady was there for this. He witnessed this, my neighbor. <laughs> and uh, and then fucking it explodes and it hurt. Like it gave me a shiner. I swear, a rotten sweet potato gave me a shiner and I had a bruise <laughs> underneath my fucking eye. Not crazy, but I had a shiner. And I, and I just, you know, I just saw red. I saw blood and I scoop it out my eye. And I literally had a case of organic rice drink, the half gallon, not even the small. There's two sizes. And I just went, I just fucking halt. You know, I went, ah, and I threw the case at him, a fucking case, a case of soy milk. And I went, ah, and it fucking couldn't have hit this fool better, dude. I swear on my life. It hit him like in his head. He just went, ah, it hit him in his head and then like hit him in the back of the neck and then his back and then like hit, I fucking, I, I th I'm not that strong, but like, you know, when some shit happens, yeah. you just got, ah! <laughs> and it fucking hit his body three times, like head, neck, back, and then hit the, the rack behind him and exploded <laughs> fucking uh, rice milk everywhere, all over the walls. And then we go to square up because we're going to fight. And this is the Trader Joe's. <laughs> this is at work. <laughs> so we're on the clock. So y'all, are y'all in the back? We're in the back room. Oh, okay. In the right. back, uh, uh, fucking where so, we store so, all the shit. So no one knows that this is going. Just down. me, him, and and uh, our buddy who we witnessed all this. And then he just sees me with sweet potato on my face. He sees fucking Marco with soy milk. I mean, uh, rice drink, same shit. Milk dripping down his body. Milk on the walls. Milk on the floors. And then we go to fucking square up. And we're like, we both, we both wanted to kill each other. But we both also knew if we fight beyond this point, we're both going to lose our jobs today. And we both need our jobs at that time, you know. And then my buddy Brady, he saved us. He's like, don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Because we were just like, just like, and you know, and then we didn't fight. And then uh, he blocked me on Instagram. And uh, and then, like, you know, like, we're men. You know, two weeks went by. We're friends again. We, we laugh about it. I still joke. And then he went to, I just went shopping recently. And he's like, when are you going to? fucking go. i want to go to your shows i was like i post them on instagram he's like i can't find you on instagram and this fool goes you block me and then come to find out we go to his account and he blocked me and it was just <laughs> so much time had passed we both had forgot and it was just so funny that he's like you blocked me but really he blocked me and yeah so fucking he gave me a shiner and i threw a case of soy milk at that motherfucking's see, head y'all both got bad revenge because <laughs> you didn't get away with it see he knew he knew immediately it was you and you gave him a chance to retaliate. You should have finished him. You should have. You should have. We, 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 we're friends now. Put, That's good revenge. Put, put a motherfucking can of peaches in a in a in one of those one of those uh, 
plastic bags and bust them in his fucking head with it. Nah, man. It was good revenge because he gave me a shiner with a sweet potato and I know that motherfucker back of his head was sore <laughs> as shit. Yeah, bro. Yeah, milk <clears throat> all over his face. See, when it come to pranks... He started it. When it come to pranks, I don't play, I don't play with food, fluids... Or money, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Like, like if you if you cross one of those lines, then it's not funny. You know what I mean? Because what make it funny is like if it, there was no there's no harm. But when you're trying to harm me, like you know, like people fucking with you in your sleep, yeah, putting shit in your food, and all, I don't, that that shit ain't funny to me. No, it's not funny to me. I hate that shit too. So it's like he he started it. He started it. Yeah. You got like that case of soy milk, baby. <laughs> Woo! Brady saw it. It was magical. I don't know how I hit that motherfucker three times, but it was like, ding, ding, ding. You know how fucking heavy those kids yeah. are? What are they, 30, 40 pounds? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Yeah, 30, 40 pound case coming at your head, baby. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all had a moment. Yeah. Because usually, I mean, because all it takes is one of y'all to be, to th- the three people back there, all it takes is one of those people to be, you know, to not give a fuck. Brady saved us. He's just like, don't. He's just like, no, but, no. But Brady could have easily been like, man, you, fuck that yeah, fool. You gonna let him treat you like a bitch? It, yeah, he could all it would have took. We would have both would have pounced. If we would have fought in the back room at Trader Joe's. Yeah, man, your e- your, your ego's threatened. Yeah, there's been so many times where I like don't want to fight, but just like, oh, I can't be a bitch. If there had been a hot girl back there, y'all would have went to prison. Yeah, yeah. One of, y- one of y'all would have went. To, one of y'all would have got arrested. I would have my knife out. Because <laughs> even if she was, even if she'd have been like, "Hey guys, don't do it," y'all would be like, ah, "This fuck. is for Vanessa." <laughs> <laughs> you shiv a man for a fucking girl. Yeah, that's what like I, I, I I've never experienced this, but they say the worst the worst thing you can do is beat a man up in front of his kids, like when they little. Beat a man up in front of his son. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, that's the worst thing ever. Yeah, yeah. I never <laughs> saw my dad get beat up. Nah, I never seen my dad get beat up either. But I've, I know that I know that daddies have been got have gotten their ass beat in front of. Oh, their for kids. sure. Yeah, and it's, and it's like your son not supposed to know that early that you a bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you you supposed he supposed to think you Superman for like at you know, least till he's twelve years yeah. old. Yeah, give him twelve years. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking all the cat. kids are like my dad will beat it my dad will beat up your dad and every kid's supposed to say that like yeah you're not supposed to be like i don't know it could go either way with my dad you know? <laughs> i don't know i seen him get knocked out last <laughs> week at the grocery store yeah. by a lady he cut her in line she threw a case of soy milk at his head <laughs> your headphones tripped me out so much because i was like i looked at these and oh. then I looked at you, and then I looked at me, and I looked oh, yeah. at him, and I was like, How they we get getting new podcast? How do they fucking get on the floor? I don't know. I keep them with, I keep them with the water <laughs> bottle so I don't forget that shit. Because, look, nigga, I'm on the bus. I, 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 when I leave shit at people's house, man, it take me like a week to get that shit back. Yeah? Yeah, especially when, my, yeah, for sure. when the homie's a comic, and it's like, I, when, do I, when the next time I'm going to run into you? You know? At the store... Yeah, I mean it's gonna happen eventually. Yeah, you're right. But it, but it, like it can't be the night. It can't be the month. Like if I was to leave some shit here, it's like I, I wouldn't necessarily get it back tonight. Maybe not no. tomorrow. No, and then I don't want to take it to the clubs because I'm not gonna carry it. It's right. Like, yeah. Right. Just come over. I'll give you some green tea and some high chews. But I need that shit. I need my headphones so people don't talk to me on the bus. That bus life, I never really had to do it. I did it a little bit just because I used to drink, and yeah. I used to take the bus drunk. To the comedy store but then uh there is upside to it though there's one upside one major you get upside. work done yeah you get work done you get right and shit you don't have to this. pay attention to the road no you know you can just read i get a lot of reading done yeah when because I, I noticed when i started ubering not only did it cost me way more money but you stopped those activities i, I got less reading in i got le- yeah so because i ain't gonna read at home yeah no, oh, I got a TV. I got you know Xbox. I got Netflix. Yeah, I got. It's way See, that's why I gave up reading altogether. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I really need to start reading. I read, but not like novels and shit. Um, I just have little notes. Oh. No, I just cause I, I like to tell stories, you know. So, uh, I think uh, this is a 
a bit that's probably been done 50 million times but i found it in my old notes you know and i was like it's worth exploring but i think it's funny like how all the teachers are fucking all the kids you know and how if it's a male teacher and he seduces a young female student he's a predator and and a prey and he's all that shit but then if it's a woman teacher seducing a young male student she's fucking awesome you know (laughs) like but most of the time isn't that what it is what it's usually the the female student seducing the male student yeah and i hate the students that rat her out and get her caught because she gifted you this pussy yeah dude but you know what that you've been dreaming about your whole <laughs> life you know what i mean dude but there's no way you're gonna be there's no way listen you, there's no way you can expect a teenager to keep a secret like coming you know what I mean? For the first time. Like, okay, all right, maybe so. Maybe brag about it because it's impossible. It's your first sexual experience. But don't testify. Can you uh, just say, I was just, jo-? you know what I mean? You put that woman in prison for giving you some chichis? Come on, man. That's like yeah. someone giving you a million dollars and then you <laughs> rat them out and say, <laughs> "I." you know what I mean? Like, maybe tell your friends about the million bucks, but just don't tell the court of law. Some people are fucked up behind that shit, though. What guy's gonna be fucked up about a? If a guy, I, I'm just saying in this scenario, if it's a fucking horny high school student okay. seduced by a guy, seduced by a female teacher, and he, there's no way he's fucked up about that. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah, fantasize. Right. That is literally a dream come true. Yeah, of course. If it's weird shit and he's fucked up, then testify. If that lady fucking sucked your dick and you enjoyed it you better not take the stand you better you're a piece of shit you fucking get your dick wet and you rat hold up yo and, you know what i mean and she gave you an a yeah she gave you an a and, and you passed the class she passed the class gave you some ass and you're gonna snitch you fucking you're a piece of shit you're scum you little fucking mildly molested you know what i mean God, get out of here. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Mildly molested, bro. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. she fucked you up, she fuck you up. Whatever. That's yeah, that's a catchphrase right there. You put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the old mildly molested podcast brought yeah. to you by uh, Everlast. I don't know why I chose a boxing brand. My, for that. Mildly molested. I feel like, man, somebody, uh, another comic, told me a theory the other day that they think they think like most most of the most of the dudes in Hollywood were have been molested child actors no just most of the you know actors comics all the entertainers I have no idea maybe maybe not yeah. what was their theory um I, was there any evidence behind it I don't know no I, they did have a you know like they had their own shit behind I me mean, I ain't write it down I ain't take notes I was just like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna think on that. I'm gonna think on it. Cause, you know, you might have something there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, but like, but like you said, if it made you a star, if it was, it's a, worth it. I, I only had, I only had one. Well, I mean, no, I don't know. I had two, two teachers I, that I wanted to fuck through high school, and I went to like six high schools. Mom was Miss Tessier. She had a big booty. Home economics. Oh, we. I don't remember. I think I talked about her. I want to oil that big booty up. Uh, Yo, I, one time I went back, I went to court in uh, in D.C. And I run his, our band teacher, my old band teacher, his name was Mr. Gillespie. And I see, and I see him in the courthouse. I'm like, hey, Mr. Gillespie, what's up? And he was like, he, like it, you could tell like he was just like, like you know how when you run into somebody when you're in a hurry when you run into a friend yeah when you out and about you're in a hurry you know you know it's like that he was like god damn it yeah like, i don't want to do this <laughs> and i found out later like that's what happened to him he like he he fucked some some girl that was in the band and he was like the nicest coolest teacher everybody loved him did they end up getting married and fall in love after no <laughs> all I right think he went, i think he went straight to jail oh uh, yeah <laughs> that'll happen yeah yeah there's weird exceptions to the rules i know this is unpopular opinion but uh, I remember one teacher was in love with this one girl, but uh, they ended up getting married and like 
been together for like 20 years and sometimes that shit happens but most of the time it's probably a little predator uh predatorial uh a little you know it's just worse if it's a male teacher and a female student it just is it right yeah because i think i think in a sense in a sense all men are are predatory like that's how we we hunt you know yeah. what i mean and it's like when women are like they choose they don't necessarily hunt so it's like yeah and at such a young age i, I don't know what kind of choice the, she the has whole, the whole age thing is just all about like do, do they stand a chance but it's all mating behavior is predatory but it's about whether or not it's a fair fight you know what i mean yeah that's true that's a good that's a, see the smart jokes over here i told you man so i oh uh, yeah, so I feel like I don't know. I mean, maybe that's why it's different. Maybe that's why everyone looks at it different. Because um, yeah. some people, because some people do strongly make the argument that it's the same, but but I don't, I don't think they really believe that that it's the same. No, nobody's nobody's caping for that boy. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah, the judge when sentencing is like, you got your dick. No, I'm just, I'm gonna yeah. give her six months. You Honestly, know? yeah. And if it's the other way around, he's giving the dude like ten years, twelve years, whatever the fuck. Because like that's one of those things that like I know it's wrong, but I don't feel that it's wrong. Yeah, I, I don't have that the emotion attached to it. So like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue about it. Like it's fucking wrong. You fucking know. You know. <laughs> I just if I, if I was taking the test, is this wrong? I would I would check the right answer. Yeah, but. If it if it's me that has to do something about it, I'm probably not gonna care. So I I, I it, it he got your uh, e cigarette. It happened to a buddy of mine. Uh, I'm not gonna name him, but he's been on the podcast, and he fucking uh he his teacher fucked him. She fucked him, and he said it was the coolest shit ever. <laughs> and he kept his mouth shut and didn't tell anybody, Whoa. and didn't get her in trouble. And uh, God bless you. <laughs> Micah, but that's, <laughs> but that's got that's got to be awkward, man. That's so cool. He told me that I was like, "Fuck, that's amazing." Has he seen her since? I don't even know. See, I feel like he owes her. I feel like he, but you know, he gotta he gotta find her. He gotta catch up. You know what I mean? When she about when she about seventy five. You know what I mean? She in the nursing home. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? All her all her best all her best nuts is behind her. You know. And just give her, give her one good one. Give her one oral pleasure on that bed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. He should go nah, eat that her, old pussy. Give, give her the works. Right before. You know I mean? Like, come back. He eats her pussy. She comes, <laughs> she farts, and she dies. <laughs> yeah, she she, call, she, call, she, call, <laughs> she open her pussy. Hey, young Padawan, teach me all that you've learned. That's so funny. I groomed you for this day. <laughs> Get over here and eat this pussy. <laughs> Dude, we gonna both get in trouble for this. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but I'm, we're not famous enough, though. So. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's gonna come back. But and, we will get there, and they'll be like, "What was this about?" <laughs> ah, it's a long time ago. It was a different era. It was the PC era. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the next era is gonna be? The fucking shock era, because everybody's so sick of the fucking PC police, pussy ass, bitch ass motherfuckers. Who are the PC police, though? The internet fucking internet trolls they're never going to win because none of some people listen but we're never going to abide by their rules and then they'll go away over time or we'll get arrested and this is going to become a nazi state yeah and we can't talk about fucking eating old ladies pussies for fucking us and when we were in high school theoretically (laughs) just jokingly inventing up that's what's also insane. I know it's been talked about before, but we invent ideas that aren't realities, that are jokes, and people get offended over shit that never even happened. You're right. like, that didn't happen. He, My friend didn't eat the old lady <laughs> teacher pussy. You know, we right. invented that story. Actually... Maybe he will. I wanted to. I wanted to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. somebody could get offended by that, and we made it up. Right, right. It's insane, really. But also, it's like even if it really happened, it's like mind your business. Yeah. If she no, wanted it. He wanted if it. If no one's getting hurt, it's none of your business. That's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, 
Yeah, if he wants to find some old lady and eat her pussy, like what is? Yeah, what's yeah. your objection to that? <laughs> and you don't think, you don't old think, stinky pussy just put a little cough drop in your nah, mouth. Nah, man. Oh, first, first of all, all eucalyptus. First of all, let me that <laughs> wait away. Let me let me let me just say this. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't think pussies age at the same rate as like the rest of people's body. You know. You're right, cause my grandma's uh, <laughs> vagina. <laughs> that shit was slick, dude. <laughs> Had no hair. Look, she waxed it. Put a little a- a- animal f- fucking lard, frijole lard on there. What did you, did you find her body or something? She, like, no, my head helped my mom uh, oh. take care of her, and she shit the bed. And uh, I've talked about this one a little yeah. bit. It's so funny. I'll re-talk <laughs> about it though. So my poor uh, Mexican grandma, she's she's. I, I love her. It's going to sound fucked up the way I talk about her, but she's a big old butterball. You know, she's an overweight Mexican lady. And uh, she shit the bed, and my mom, she used, she used to, I used to, literally, I'd have to roll her over, and I'd have to hold her like this, so me and my grandma would be face to face, and I'd be, like, rolling her over WWE style while my mom cleaned her up because she was so heavy, I couldn't pick her up, you know? Okay. And she'd be right in my face, face to face, going like, Deja me, Philippe, because that, that means leave me alone, Philip. That's my middle name. And I'd be like, I'm sorry, Grandma. <laughs> like, my mom's got to clean that ass. But then uh, I guess we're going to go there and we're going to do the whole goddamn thing. So uh, my grandma, she used to get nauseous. And they used to give us anti-nausea pills, but she'd throw them up. So then they gave us hospice. She was on hospice. She went to 92, don't feel bad. And, and uh, you know, she lived a good life. And then she, so they gave us uh, anti-suppository uh, bullets. They're little bu- silver bullets you shove up your asshole, and they and they shoot up like a rocket, and they work. And they fucking work because I ate a rotten hot dog, and I thought I was gonna die, and I put a bullet on my ass, shot up, and within minutes I stopped puking and shitting my brains out, and I literally was army crawling to the bathroom, so they fucking work. So it, it, my my grandma's nauseous. What did you get a rotten hot dog? A golf course, okay. <laughs> fucking golf course, bastards. Anyway, so uh, so grandma, she's sick, and uh, it's time to roll her over WWE style, you know. And then my mom has to put a bullet up her booty hole, and my mom doesn't want to do it, so she closes her eyes and she fucking just pops it in, you know. <laughs> and then uh, the next day, the hospice nurse that comes to give my grandma a sponge bath, and uh. And she keeps going, uh-uh, who did this? Who did this? <laughs> and my grandma's fucking pussy is all bubbling and foaming up because my mom had closed her eyes and put it in the oh, wrong hole. Oh, <laughs> oh, what so fuck? she put it in her mo- <laughs> And I said that, I talk about that on stage and uh, <laughs> it's a bit shocking, so I, I can't what, figure it out. Minute, just she- yet. The big punchline is my mom... <laughs> accidentally fingered her own mom <laughs> but did did did, he, did your grandma get anything out of it no just a bubbly foamy fucking vagina okay and i i don't know if the suppository worked but it was so <laughs> fun she was just sitting there coming all <laughs> night long <laughs> I, I, no i don't even know Mia. but the nurse it was so funny because she's like who did this who did this and my mom was like guilty <laughs> like she, she's just she was like, "Sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to look." <laughs> and uh, what does your mom say when you bring up that story? She laughs. She's got a good sense of humor. <laughs> She's like, "Oh yeah, that was gross, huh?" She's a funny lady. God damn, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, man. Yeah. So I, I, I've told that on stage. It works half the time. It's a hard one to figure out. <sighs> But when it does work, it works in a different kind of way. Like, nobody will forget me for the rest of their life. Yeah. You know what it is? I think <laughs> that people don't like picturing shit. It's like, they weren't there. Every, yeah, but every joke where you every joke where you mention shit is a, is rolled in the dice because no one wants to picture that. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. I did it at a rehab show recently, and it fucking killed, dude. But the rehab shows are different. Those yeah. people have been through everything. They're like, oh, I, I did that, too. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> rehab got the best. That's the best crowds. Oh, we have the best crowds. Prisoners. Oh, yeah. my God. Like anybody that's, like, seen a lot of shit. Or rehab that are straight prison alternatives. They're like, do you want to go to prison or do you want to go to rehab? So it's kind of yeah. like prison slash rehab. Oh, my God. Best crowds ever for comedy. 
you talk about grandma's pussies all you want, dude. Yeah. But I talk about that on stage too, and in this is because I I don't know what else to talk about but my life. I'm a storyteller. But my grandma, but I've seen both my grandma's vaginas, and uh, my white side, Nana, she used to just come home from church, and she was like a free spirit, you know. She I had three husbands, buried them all type of lady, you know, just oh, yeah. a glass of Chardonnay. She's a hip, hip lady. And uh, we'd always catch her breaking into our house, snooping and stealing cups and shit and pictures. She's a hip lady. And she would uh, hit the door after she'd take me and my sisters to church. And uh, we wear church clothes, you know, but we'd always bring play clothes afterwards. So we'd go to Nana's house and she would just hit the door and just flick off her dress as she was walking to the bedroom kind of lady. But me and my sisters were like, Nana, like fucking, we can see your fucking silver bush, dude. Like put that shit, you know? <laughs> Put some shit on it. Like, even as a young kid, we're like, this is weird. Um, but she just didn't give a fuck. It wasn't in a weird molesty way. It was just like, I don't want to be in my dress anymore. <laughs> and then it, it didn't, you know what I mean? That was just, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's a different. That's the way to shut the fucking kids up, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you want to shut the fuck up? Oh, yeah. Watch this silver bush or shut you up, young man. Arguing over who wants to watch Nickelodeon or MTV. <laughs> Nana had cable and we didn't have cable, so we loved being there. And she had the good snacks. And I remember watching, uh, like, Smells Like Teen Spirit, like, at like nine years old or whenever it came out. And I was like, whoa, you know? And watching uh, Van Hagar, Van Halen, after Van, after fucking David Lee Roth, do, that do, right now. Do your sisters remember seeing your grandma's bush? Oh, for sure. <laughs> you kidding? They're older, they have a more vivid picture than me. <laughs> I just wonder how it's like how it shaped their lives. Like if they if they prefer their bushes that shape and all that. We're tough kids, man. We seen grandma's pussies, cousins pussies. We don't give a fuck. Are you ever gonna have one of them on? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Soon I need to. I need to have them. Yeah, just I want to get them to drive to Hollywood. <laughs> I wanna hear from the sister that um that that we all had to jerk off that dolphin. Oh, the shark. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should actually have, we should, yeah, a shark came on me and my sister's, uh, <laughs> our fucking tummies. I forgot about that bit. I stopped doing it. That's that, a good one. Yeah, that's the, that's when I first saw you when yeah. you were doing that bit. Yeah. Uh, the shark, that was a long time ago. It's called Shark Come. <laughs> we went, <laughs> that's what, it, that's yeah. what you have written down shark as? Shark Come. <laughs> <laughs> my set list is so fun. It's called fucking Shark Come, Cousin's Pussy, Grandma's Pussies. Wait a minute, so you've seen your cousin's pussy and both grandma's pussies? Yeah. Any other pussies you've seen? <laughs> I'm sure of it. I can't think of it. But it was always in natural ways, in normal circumstances. Okay. Not in a weird way, you know. My cousin, she was giving birth to her boy, and I was in the labor room. Oh, word, word, word. And the doctor said, you want to see a baby being brought into this world? And I was like, yeah. So I seen it. And that, that's a new bit I've been doing on stage. It's been it's been hitting pretty good because it's true. Because the doctor, I still don't know to this day what he did. But he's like, do you want to see a baby? And I asked my cousin. And I know it's weird. And she's like, yeah, you know, all right. I was high, too, at that time. And uh, so I was like, yeah, you know, this is. And then I go to look, and nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And then I look at the doctor, and he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. It was too soon. And I was so I stared at my cousin's vagina for no reason, you know, and I want to know, like, does the, does this doctor have the sickest sense of humor ever where he was like, I'm going to make this high motherfucker yeah. stare at his cousin's pussy because he did. He got me, dude. That's and, exactly uh, what he did. I just been telling that story on stage in more vivid detail. And uh, and uh, it's been hitting, man. It's been hitting. Yeah. I feel like any story about a vagina you're not supposed to see. It's, it's a hitter. It's a hit, yeah. <laughs> it's a hit. Because people love picturing vaginas. Yeah. Yeah, everyone loves. Everybody loves vagina. Vaginas, titties, people. That's a good image. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I saw a baby. I seen a baby being brought into this world, man. That's crazy. It's, a, it's like alien shit. <laughs> it's women sprout a human being out their wee-wee, man. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> One of my biggest fears is dropping a baby. Yeah, I told my sister, I I hold her kids, but when they're brand new, I was like, give them a month or two. Mm. 
No, I, I dropped. Don't. I dropped one baby. You did? I did. Yeah, and I, and I don't. I don't touch them. I don't hold them at all. No. Damn. Yeah. 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 Nope. Now, like people want to know. People want. They want. They want to like insist that you hold the kid. And I'm like, nah, no, I'm good. Back up, lady. You got a cat? I'll hold yeah. your cat. My sister dropped me on my head when I was an infant. <laughs> when did she tell you that? They've been telling me my whole life. They said I screamed and they're so scared. On the concrete too. Uh, how? Oh, fuck. From how far? I was outside. I don't know. She said I was walk walking with you and just drop you in the driveway or some shit. And and then they just I screamed. And uh it's like what's a fucking seven year old doing holding an infant? You know, sitting down is <laughs> one thing. Walking up a driveway what do you think's gonna happen? Parents. <laughs> Anyways, probably made me funny. <laughs> <laughs> Getting dropped on your head? I don't yeah, fucking I mean, know. I, I think you, you yeah, babies can you can so you can bounce back from that as a baby. You know? Yeah. Yeah, 'cause I, I think if you if you're gonna be if you're gonna be if you're gonna be retarded, that's that's gonna be built in. You know. I don't think a drop could fix it magically or, or make you stupid. Yeah. I know that uh, I forgot, but I was watching a, a Sam Kinison documentary, and uh, I want to say he, his mom said in an interview that Sam Kinison was a nice, well-behaved, mild-mannered child, and then he got hit by a car, and he got all fucked up, and then he healed, and he came back like, you know, like a you, fucking. No, beast. you're right. I'm a fucking idiot. You're right. Remember there's that? It's, there's thousands of documented cases of that. Yeah. Of people <laughs> fucking up. I don't know which part of your brain is your hypothalamus or your medulla. Those are only two pieces I know. Your medulla obligata or your hypothalamus. Medulla obligata. Yeah. But it's some part of your it's some part of your brain where if it's damaged, it like severely affects your personality. Yeah. But is that but is that intelligence though? Does it affect your intelligence? I know it gave us Sam Kennison, yeah. the late great Sam Kennison. So God bless that car that hit him, and maybe my sister dropping me on my head turned me into a muppet, and it wasn't the drugs. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's probably the drugs. Yeah, it's probably the drugs. <laughs> yeah, because you still, because you like permafrag, right? Like you're like. I guess so, man. Everyone thinks everyone assumes you a stoner when they meet you. Yeah. Well, I got the vibe and the culture and. And and the hair and and, and the draw I'm chill and the draw and yeah. you smoke weed for seventeen years, you know, it's just gonna have an effect on your personality. And people I hate it when people are like, Are you faking it? It's like uh, Are you faking it? I was like, <laughs> No, man, it's fucking asshole. Wow. People always ask me, Where's your accent from? I'm like drugs. Like I don't <laughs> I ain't from the South. I ain't from Minnesota. I ain't from Canada. I just fucking did drugs from 12 to 29 <laughs> this is what happens yeah 12 is 12 12 is hardcore well it was just weed back then uh, but that's when, you, when it started when did you first, how was you when you first did your first hard drug uh i think i did coke when i was 18 but it didn't like creep in creep in till i was 20 2021 the bar scene and have you done everything what haven't you what haven't you done uh I haven't smoked crack, but I smoke a lot of cocaine, mm -hmm. so I I don't know. <laughs> but I've done them all. I never shot up, you know. Smoke a little, little, little speed, little. You about to chime in? Little coke. He's all just right. needing. I done acid, Molly, ecstasy, coke, every pill you could think of. Fucking speed, smoke, heroin. Uh, Ayahuasca. Never did that one. Yeah, so that's what I'm waiting on. That one I might do uh, later in life. Maybe I'm, 40. I'm a, yeah. yeah, well, I'm, I'm pushing 40, so I'm, it's coming up. Yeah, because it's, it's, that's a... Uh, I believe in sobriety and, and, you know, don't do drugs because I went down that dark path and it's a shitty one that has no bright future. But, like, once a year mushrooms... Or every, you know what I mean? Kind of reset, mm. re restart, recharge. If you're not a drug addict, of course. I believe in that. And uh, ayahuasca, once a year, every other year, whatever. Yeah, cause, it's cause, like an event that helps you yeah. metamorph and change 
it's not like meth. Nobody does meth and goes, I'm going to change myself for the better. You do meth, you get a boner, and you stick a spoon in your ass. Yeah, you... <laughs> You can't get <laughs> you can't get strung out on ayahuasca like no. it's, just not, it's not even possible. It's 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 I've never done it, but it's similar to the hallucinogen family. Every time I done mushrooms, when even when I was a fucking drug addict on narcotics, it made me go. It made me appreciate nat- nature first of all, right out the gates. You just appreciate plants. No wonder I, I fucking got plants everywhere. But it also made it, every single time I was like. Man, I'm going to quit doing drugs. I'm going to hug my mother. I'm going to apologize to my sister. You know, like every time I did mushrooms, it made me reevaluate myself and want to change myself for the better. I cannot say that about cocaine. I cannot say that about alcohol. I cannot even say that about marijuana. But I can say that about mushrooms. Every single motherfucking time it had me wanting to better myself. Then, of course, immediately after the come down, I didn't like it. I would go get some Oxycontins and score because that makes you feel good. And then you scratch your nutsack. But that was just because I was weak and I didn't uh, listen to my own inner voice telling me what to do. Inspired by mushrooms. And that inner voice always said, get sober for me personally because i can never i was never i was a never one one puff guy one pill guy one i was like okay it says take two i'll take seven (laughs) and learn right right or fucking fry you know what i mean because i I like that i liked hunter s thompson i liked fear and loathing i like going to bonkersville and being scared and wondering if i was ever going to come back i like that that's probably why I like stand up. I like the the you know the the Yeah, see bro. You I'm, don't know what's going to happen. I'm the complete opposite. I don't think I've I've ever like I've gone <laughs> I've gone hard, but I've never been like I'm I'm gone. I'm you know what I mean? I'm taking oh, I love I'm going to take all I've never done that. I've done seven drugs at once. I ate them all at once, sniffed them just fucking fucking Oh god. Little put that 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 no. And then <laughs> I literally drank it with beer and just giggled like, oh, what's going to happen? So what was the seven drugs? Uh, it was at Coachella with my buddy. I was going to name them. I'm learning lessons. And we did uh, we did uh, fucking, I forgot if it was Vicodin or Oxycontin. Was, I, probably Vicodin or Norcos. Ecstasy, uh, mushrooms, weed, cocaine alcohol and adderall low speed yeah jesus christ man it was great it was great actually it it wasn't that great yeah i I was uh, the only thing i was proud of on how well i kept it together because then we would run into other friends and uh and and then like we would keep conversation and dialogue going but then after so long i'd be like I'm on seven drugs. And they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're like, wow, you're really keeping it together. Yeah, that's, yeah, fuck, fuck that. No, I can't lose that much control. Oh, man. It, it, the only thing I regret is we went there to see 14, 20 bands, whatever, and we successively saw two because we couldn't figure it out because we were just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> What's that to figure out? Don't you just go towards the noise? <laughs> There's four or five <laughs> stages there at oh. different bands, different times, different stages, and navigating that was so hard, was so hard, because you couldn't really read when you're on that many drugs, you know. Yeah, that, I would never go to a festival. That's not that is my personal hell. It is hell to me now. People are like, "Why don't you keep going?" I only went when I was on drugs because you need to be on drugs to enjoy yourself because it's a miserable circumstances. Mm-hmm. It's overcrowded. It's sweaty. It's hot. The bands you even are seeing would be better in a small theater or smaller venue. You know, it's very rare a band excels at a festival-like environment. They have to be like a loud rock and roll. You know, right, right. you're not gonna fucking. Willie Nelson at the Troubadour and at Coachella are two different things, you know, it like, or, or, or even hip hop, you know, it's like atmosphere is going to be better at the Wiltern than at Coachella. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's just a better environment. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, it's even stacked up against the band. It's just not, it's the only thing it's good for is for experimentation with drugs and, uh, like just 
learning new music you might not have normally have checked out. That's what it's good for. Because you go for Kanye, but then you learn who the Pixies are or whatever the case may be, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, it, it's, it is good for that if you don't know music and you, you know, you could. Because I learned of some bands. Like, I didn't know of, uh, I think it's called Gossip, The Gossip. That fucking, that chick is rocks. She's this big girl and she just fucking sings and strips down and she's down her fucking bra just screaming and it's who i think it's called the gossip look it up um they're on spotify but like that band i didn't really know and then i was at coachella on drugs and then i was like oh my god and then you let then you you know what i mean you just discover shit so coachella is like discover weekly is for spotify you gonna play a little tune the gossip yeah yeah, they just, just she's just a fucking badass, man. That it's, might get us kicked off YouTube. You're not even allowed to do samples. I don't think so. All right, don't well, do it. No, wait a minute, but I thought, I thought there's you... rules of music. I think you could do like 15 ah. seconds or something. Just, we need to look up those rules. So we don't want to get doing kicked commentary. off. Commentary. Yeah, you can play. There's certain rules to it. We'll need to figure that out. Yeah. I'm not an entertainment lawyer though. Fucking scumbag lawyers. Um. Anyways, check out the gossip. The gossip. Oh yeah, I'm, I, should, I gotta say that shit in my phone. How long we been rolling? Uh, an hour and twenty two. Holy shit! You're a good guest. I, I, yeah, I guess. I, fe- I don't feel like a good guest. You're a good guest. Thank you. We just hit an hour twenty, and I don't even know how. Yeah, because we, because uh, we do this every time we see each other. Yeah. This is just yeah, us had- talking shit. Yeah, we. I cannot speak high. I don't know if I did this up top, but I love this dude, and he's funny as fuck. He's going to blow up. He just started opening up for Tom Segura. Give him time, he'll fucking be as big as Tom Segura. I, honestly, when I think about my future, I feel like I'm going to be one of those people that uh, that like dies tragically. <laughs> and, That's like, not a good and people outlook. talk about what I could have been. No, actually, isn't it though? It's not. It's not it's ideal. Not, it's not, it's not. It's not ide- I'm not saying it's what People I want. People can talk about you like that, and you can still be alive. No, no, no. I'm not saying that that's how I want to go. I'm saying that that's how I think I'm. I, it's going to end up. I, I don't. I feel like I'm going to die before I'm successful. Well, I hope not. Yeah, and then and then and then, <laughs> I don't feel that and way. And then to my and then my mama will will like make put out like a copy. Like she'll take some open mic recordings and make an album out of it. And you know, that'll go viral. And like 500 people. And you'll be in heaven. You're like, you chose the open mic footage. <laughs> was so I was so much better than that. Yeah. I have nightmares about it. I have nightmares about dying. Well, maybe you should dying take that stage. ayahuasca sooner rather than later. It, it, it's just death. We're fucking energy. Yeah. We float on. Bro, Don't you want to have a fucking adventure? Look up. Try to Google how to kill yourself. Nah. Like, what are the best ways to kill you? you <laughs> no, don't worry, because they won't tell you. You like you have to you have to dig super hard to get an answer. I mean, if you can't figure that out, you don't deserve to kill yourself. <laughs> no, no, it's like it's like, but there are there are best there are ways to do it. That was a dark joke. It's like there's ways to do it. To the only re- like when I was in dark in a dark place and like I was thinking about you know suicide, the only thing that helped me from doing it was there wasn't I couldn't think of a way to do it that I could afford, that was a guarantee. That I couldn't that I that was quick painless. And that I couldn't possibly survive, you know. Yeah, you got to really think about about that, you know. But I found it. I finally found it. Yeah, I don't know if I want to. Just share because, that. like, if you if you ask Google, <laughs> don't they'll kill just be yourself. like, they'll no, they'll that's what they'll do. If you Google how do I, what's the best way to kill yourself, it'll just be like su- the suicide hotline is like the first ten results of suicide hotline. Suicide Good hotline. job, Google. That's dope. You don't like that? No. <laughs> if because why should, why do they get to control information? I'm looking for. Because they might let more people kill themselves. And then what if they fucking made a mistake and didn't want to kill themselves? That's true. But I don't see too many people out there like, suicide hotline saved my life. They just put it up to the how, cover How do you ass. know? I've never heard anybody like give a testimony. I hear people talk about That's AA. not exactly the most uh, uh, thing you want to put out to the world. That you was going to kill yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. But I should at least be able to know how. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I don't like the fact that that knowledge is behind. Like somebody up there arbitrarily decides what information is. It's probably a, a book in the library. You got to go old school. Yeah. Fucking look up in the Dewey Decimal System. I mean, I, I, I got to save to my Evernote. Imagine being Dewey Decimal and then computers came out. And he's like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my claim to fame. <laughs> Nobody's calling Apple the Dewey Decimal Apple. Yeah, like, get the fuck out of here with your, Sorry, ab- Dewey. With your abacus. Sorry, Dewey. Looks like you should use Google on how to kill yourself <laughs> and not have success. Yeah, I wonder, if, I wonder if there's any other shit out there Google won't tell you. Probably. Like how to build a bomb. Yeah, no, Google will let you know how to build a bomb. It seems like that is uh, of equal. Uh, yeah, they'll suicide. let you know. How you know to, they'll let they you know how block to, that one. They'll let you know how to poison people. They'll let you Google all that shit. Any anything you want to plug or yeah. some shit it comes out oh, in a week. Yeah, plug my podcast. BS with Brian Simpson. BS with Brian oh shit. We're all, oh yeah. Before we end, so we've been going good. I've been getting better at this. I hope I am. Listeners, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. hey, you got any good poop stories, shit your pants stories? You, you, uh, uh, real embarrassing on your wedding night, on a first date, at, on stage. No, here's the, here's the, here's good my diarrhea. My embarrassing, because my it's really a non-story because I've never, I've never technically shit my pants. Dude, it's the black people thing. You know how many uh, black homies I had on here, and they never have a doo-doo <laughs> story besides David Murphy, which was the opposite effect. No, I have. You guys don't shit your pants. I have a doodle story. No, no, no. I do have a story. So, as every, I so this has happened to me three times, where I've had to go, had to go, had to go, make it to the bathroom because I'm kind of, I'm kind of weird when it comes to like germs and stuff in the bathroom. So I have to clean the seat a certain way. So, so I, I had to go real bad, and I'm cleaning the seat, and right before I'm able to spin it, spin it around and and drop down, I shit into my pants. That are already around my ankles, <laughs> and that, that's that's happened to me three times, where I've almost made it to the toilet and I shit into my pants. But I feel like your pants have to be up for it to I count mean, as shit in your pants, right? Technically, you did shit your pants, right? So like, I think we should. But I think we should that was like an alley oop hook shot type shit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know about that one. It's like a you know, I'm like the Russell Westbrook of shit in my pants. It's like I got all the stats that don't matter. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna win a championship. The way I'm shitting in my pants. <laughs> That's so funny. But I am I am doing something no one's ever done before. You know. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, no, I haven't shit my pants. And if you ask, if you ask me in court, I would say no, I have not. If you ask me under oath, you'd be like, "Well, define the definition of shit in your pants. Does the belt have to be around the waist?" <laughs> no. Right. I mean, well, I don't know because I definitely did not intend for shit to be in my pants when it was all said and done. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! Yeah, and and what sucks even more about that is like it gets on the floor and that, so so like you got a whole situation to deal yeah. with. Yeah, because you're shitting. Yeah. So it's like it's 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 a weird thing because usually if you if you shit your pants, the shit's over. You've already shit. Yeah. But in this situation, it's like I'm mid shit. And I got shit to deal with. And it, it's a, yeah, it's an ordeal. And it happens to me, I think they're probably like five, six years apart. It'll it'll strike again. I, like right when I let my when I let my guard yeah, down, yeah, yeah. it'll strike again. Like, <laughs> God damn it, not again. The moral of the story, just sit on that piss, man. <sighs> sit on I, that I dirty toilet. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, because I've been, I've been traumatized like when, <clears throat> when I was in Iraq. So, you know, all we had was, well, first of all, we went from my first, in my, in my first deployment, we were digging holes to shit in. We were, we had to dig a hole, put a box over the hole and put a plank over the, over the hole so the box stayed even. So you had to go shit with a buddy so that it didn't topple over one way or the other. So you had to go sit back to back to shit with somebody, you know. That sounds like too much work to shit in the hole. What you mean? You got to sit down. You like, don't have to. You just squat. Uh, Papa squat. Yeah. But Papa you know, squat, put, yeah, a little, yeah, put a little sand in that you know, asshole. You got to take, you gotta take the little bit of luxuries you can get. But then it's like you have flies and shit landing on your asshole. Yeah. And, yeah, all kind of wild shit. If you want to shit during the day like a brave man. And um, and I, and I so when I, the second time I went back, you know, because shit gets nicer and nicer and nicer and slower and slower. Second time I went back, we had all porta, porta johns everywhere, you know. 
but it's like by like 2 p.m., every Porter John is just fucking full on with shit. And, you know, because they come and clean them at like six, you know, so by, but by, two, by 2 p.m., it's like they're awful. Ugh. Right? And Ugh. so you got to, you're trying to. Hey, you, hey, Marine Corps, order more porta potties. Oh, they probably got, now they probably got like running water and built, buildings built and shit. But, but my point is, you, you had to try to catch that sweet spot because, because if you went in there when it was fresh, when they freshly cleaned it, it didn't stink and it was fresh. But you was definitely going to get some of that blue shit to splash up because they were deep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were definitely going to get some blue water on your asshole. I've gone the blue blue ass. <laughs> right. It stains, too. Yeah, so you got you to gotta wait for it to get a good cushion in there. But if you wait <laughs> for it to get a good cushion in there, you've run like a 50-50 chance that you're going to get some already shitty, pissy water to splash on your butthole. Like yeah. right on your hole. Oh, yeah. Because it's coming up with force, my dude. Like it's it's a deep... Porter John, I don't know if they gave us like special ones, but it's like they probably did. It's yeah. like it's the Marines. So they then, got a lot of extra doo doo. So yo, that shit, yo, that's that shit splashed in my asshole two times before I fucking I had to develop a method. So my method was I catch one that already was a little used, and then I take a whole fucking roll of toilet paper and I would unravel it and drizzle it in there to create like a <laughs> like a cushion. You're smart, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had to go. So you're the that. reason one of them would fill up so fast. <laughs> oh <it>. yeah. <laughs> I'm the reason. But I'm, who cares? You didn't have blue splash on no, your goddamn ass. No, I had my special one too. The one the one I would masturbate in was like way the fuck out in the corner. It was never fucking full. It was never it was far, but it was never full. It was never too dirty because nobody ever went out there hardly. Yeah. You had to find one because the only other place to beat off was the shower. Or your or your rack, but it's fucking six people in your room. Yeah, no, thank you. I don't want to masturbate next to six buddies. That's what you say now, unless I'm cocaine. <laughs> yeah, but if that's your only, if that's the only place for you to masturbate. Yeah, I know, I know. Because it's either there, the shower where everyone else has to use it, or in a porta john where it's you, it's that at shit least private. Room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've masturbated in public bathrooms before. It happens. Damn, we were supposed to wrap up like 20 minutes ago. I know. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. That. No, it's good. You got good doo-doo stories. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I didn't know. Because, yeah, I would have just unloaded those on you if you told me that. Oh, thank you, everybody? Yeah. Ah, thank you. I forgot. See, I would have forgot. Okay. I almost thank you for being a guest on my podcast. Thanks, man. Who else you thinking? Uh, my Patreon persons. They signed up for Patreon. And I cannot stress enough. This motherfucker is so goddamn funny. He's one of my yes. favorites to watch. Or, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's fucking, check out his stand-up, check out his podcast, Brian Simpson. And now I'm going to thank my Patreon motherfuckers. All right. Did, uh, do I start off from the beginning? You could. You could start from where you left off last time. I start where I'm left off. Left off. This is a lot of last name. Hey, thank you for Sierra Mc. Clellan, Clellan, oh fuck, I'm gonna fuck your names up, I'm sorry guys, but she upgraded from $5 to $25 to make herself a producer, so God bless you, guess that first solo episode was good, huh, <laughs> I hope I keep it up, thank you Kayla Ray Archer, you fucking sweetheart, uh, Yekaterina Kozlova, thank you, Natalie Hill, Eric Martin, Christopher Lund, that's you fool, <laughs> Selena Spriggs, Marcy Peace, Brandon Lefebvre, Hunter Holt, Aaron Lemieux, Diana, Jade Brokus, Andrew Hoffman with the hundred dollar sugar daddy pledge. Thank you, sir. Salty Vet Svet, something I forgot. I almost <laughs> remembered Andrew. And Riley Benton, thank you. And thank you to the first Patreons persons. I, I I I if I fucked up, I'll thank you on the next one. Okay. If I miss a name, I'm a human. I make mistakes. This has been Community Service. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing, rating, review, Brian Simpson. Thank you for the Patreon. I'm a Bama Mama Camry and apologize to her for her having her bail me out of jail three times. Thank you, Mama. Oh, and uh hey, listen, if you if you if you subscribe to his Patreon, I will personally um I will personally fuck an old lady in your life. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I will find an old lady like we were talking about earlier. Okay. That really deserves all right, there you go. Patreon. Thank you. Yeah. You want your Nana to get some dick? There you go. Yep. There you go, baby. Uh, I love you all. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.